Hey, this is Dr. Watson with a video on MIDI and MIDI recording. So before we tell you what MIDI is and how to do MIDI recording, let me just take you back in time to pre-1984 when if you were somebody who was working in music with technology, it was almost like the Wild West. There wasn't any rules. Uh, different keyboard manufacturers made up their own rules for how their instruments would interact with other um, sound modules or other computers or computer software, which was actually very young at the time. And then around 1984, thankfully, um, all these keyboard manufacturers and other uh, technology players uh, came together and they decided on a set of hardware and software protocols instructions for how their instruments and computers and software would talk to one another and that is what MIDI is. MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. Um, if you want a textbook definition, here's a very good textbook <laughs> and in it it says Musical Instrument Digital Interface, the hardware and software standard protocol developed in 1984 that allows musical instruments, personal computers, and music software to interact with one another. So in that big sense, uh, MIDI um, describes what kind of cables will the data pass through. What um, is the speed at which that data passes? Um, what is in the data? There are MIDI messages and, and what, how is a MIDI message encoded? What kinds of parameters of music? So for instance, what key do I hit on the MIDI keyboard? Uh, the MIDI protocol has designated middle C as key number 60 or um, how fast you hit the key, that's the velocity, um, or how long do you depress the key or hold the key down, that would be the duration of the note, but that's encoded in MIDI data, and so many other things. So I want you to think of MIDI by thinking of two words, performance data, performance data. In other words, MIDI is not sound, MIDI is a set of instructions, and it requires some sound producing instrument to make the MIDI data come to life. So we call that realizing the MIDI data. And that's the other thing we'll talk about MIDI recording. We need to pick a software instrument or have an external synthesizer or something that's going to play the MIDI data. But the MIDI data itself is just a set of instructions. Okay, so let's go ahead and do some MIDI recording. We're going to do it in GarageBand, which is an entry-level digital audio workstation, or DAW. And um, you're looking at the uh, new project uh, window. Uh, we're going to just start with an empty project. I'll set the tempo. Um, can also set the key. I'm going to be playing in the key B flat. Um, and the time signature. Yeah, it looks good. And go ahead and say choose. And now we have an empty project. We get this window that asks us what kind of instrument. Now we're going to use a software instrument. In other words, to realize the MIDI data that we're recording, we need some kind of an instrument to sound it. And so we're going to choose software instrument. It usually gives us a default of electric piano, and that's fine. I'm just going to keep the electric piano, although over here is where we would you know, choose the different software instruments. And you can watch my video on software instruments. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and close the software instrument library so we don't see that. I'm also going to close this area in the bottom, which is where we add special effects like reverb and EQing and compression and all sorts of other plugins. I'm going to just close that for now. So right now I just have an electric piano as my software instrument. When I press the keys on my MIDI keyboard, right, I hear it sounding. So the pressing the keys on my keyboard is actually sending a MIDI message through to my computer and then GarageBand is executing that MIDI message and sending it to the software instrument electric piano. So what do you do if you don't have a nice MIDI keyboard or sometimes called a controller keyboard for entering your notes like a, a large 61 or 76 or 88 key um, a keyboard to put your notes in? Well later on in this video I'll explain two other alternative ways that you can do MIDI recording without a larger uh, MIDI keyboard. Okay so let's go ahead and record some of that MIDI data, some of that performance data that our electronic uh, piano software instrument will play. So if you don't already have a, a metronome on, you should. That'll give you a click track, you know, help you keep tempo. Uh, a count in, the one, two, three, four will give you a four beat count in to prepare you to play. Now I'm going to give you a little Watson trick that I like to use when recording. I always record to a loop when I do uh, MIDI recording. And then if I don't want that loop, if the loop has nothing to do with my piece, I can take the loop out later. But hearing the loop, and, and especially a drum loop, hearing the drum loop helps me keep good time. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my loop browser and choose a loop. Um, I'm going to go into my favorites folder. I have a, a, a Latin loop I like to use, so I'm going to just drag that in here. And what we're going to hear is like a Latin drummer. Uh, let me close the uh, edit window down below. But you're going to hear this, a Latin drummer. 
right? Because I'm going to do a little Latin uh, kind of piece. And let me close the loop browser. And that will help me keep time. So I'm going to just loop that out for a while. So here I go. I'm going to hit the record button, uh, four beats, and then I'll be recording my electric piano part um, into the, the track. Two, three, four. <laughs> Okay, so now that I've got this recorded, I'm going to double click on the region. That's what this bubble here that's green is called. It's called a region. And by the way, it's green because it's identifying it as MIDI. MIDI data in GarageBand is green. So I can either double click on the region or I can hit the um, scissors, which opens the edit window. And now I can see what I recorded. And let's go ahead um, and watch the MIDI data. Watch these green bars. Um, the bars are, are the notes, right? And how long the bar is, that's how long or how short the note is. And, and how high the bar is, is how high the note was or how low the note was. You can change that. So you can edit all these things. Oh, you can also edit how hard you hit the key. So if you select one of the notes and you think you hit it too soft, you go over here to velocity. Remember, that's that's the speed at which you hit the key. You can say, I hit the key faster, which will make it actually sound louder. Or you can have it uh, softer, um, less velocity. So all those things can be edited after the fact. Let's go ahead and just listen to it. Here we go. Okay, so for instance here, I didn't hit these keys at exactly the right time. One was a little early, so I can actually make the one that was early a little later so that they hit together. Right? Or if I wanted them both to be earlier, I can move them both earlier like this. Right? And I think that was actually the right way. So that's what's nice. I don't have to actually re-record the whole track. I can just edit the data. Okay, so let's go ahead and MIDI record another track. Uh, I'm going to hit the plus button and choose software instrument, create. This time I'm going to select in my um, software instrument library in the bass category and upright studio bass. And you can hear, right? So I have a, a bass sound. I'm going to go ahead and close the library and the uh, bottom area. Okay, so now let's go ahead and MIDI record that bass part. Here we go. One, two, three, four. All right, so there we go. We could, uh, Go ahead and play this back without me playing at all and you can hear that the the midi data is now um saved and will play back by itself here we go Just... right. and that's midi recording so it the the green bars just to be clear the green bars don't produce a sound by themselves they require um what's over here they require the software instrument, whether it's the bass or the electric piano to sound. Um, a great way to demonstrate that was what if I would take these piano notes and drag them down to the bass. Now you're going to hear that data, but played by a different instrument. Right, so now it's a bass that's playing the piano part. Or let's have the bass uh, MIDI data being played by the um, electric piano software instrument. Right, that's the bass part, but now played by the, the electric piano. All right, earlier in this video, I told you I'd share with you two ways that you can do MIDI recording if you don't have a larger MIDI keyboard. Well, one way is in GarageBand, you can go to the window menu and choose um, Show Keyboard. And then there's a little keyboard here that you can press notes on, and you can actually use that for MIDI recording. What I like, though, is actually this musical typing keyboard, which allows you to use your QWERTY keys. So right you could actually record the um, notes that you want all right take some getting used to you can change to higher octaves yeah another way uh, that you can do MIDI recording is with a smaller controller keyboard um, like this little Korg Nano that I have this is actually quite an old keyboard so let me go ahead and plug in the Korg Nano and hopefully GarageBand will recognize that uh, and there it is, it recognized that. Okay, and you can do the same thing. You can play the keys here. 
Right, you can play those in uh, recording MIDI data. So there are some alternatives. Okay, and one last trick for MIDI recording if you don't have a MIDI controller at all or don't want to use the musical typing is that you can actually pencil the notes in. So you open up your region by double clicking on it or clicking on the, the scissor tool, opens up the edit window. And then down below here in the region, if you press the key to the left of the space bar, which is the command key, watch, it turns your cursor into a pencil and then you can pencil notes in while you're holding that uh, command key down. And the, the note length will be the last note you did. So if you shorten your notes, now they'll all be short notes that you enter. And if you want to add new notes past the region, well, you just extend the region and then you can add notes there. So the pencil tool is a way to just draw notes into or, or to add that one note that you missed somewhere, right? Just, just to add it, use the pencil tool. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video on MIDI and MIDI recording. Um, I want to encourage you to check out my other videos, uh, choosing and using virtual instruments in GarageBand. Virtual instruments are those software instruments we've been talking about. And also my tutorial on recording a MIDI drum loop, which will give you some good practice with MIDI recording. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, to like this video, and to turn on notifications so that you can find out when other content is released. Thank you.